so you can handstand and you want to take it to the next level and do it in one arm. In this video, I'll show you how. We'll be covering the main prerequisites, the mechanics of a one arm, correct form, demonstration, progressions, complementary exercises, common mistakes, a warm up routine, a sample workout, and a cool down to follow. Prerequisites. Your prerequisites are going to be a minimum 15 seconds of a good form straddle handstand hold and a couple reps of shoulder taps. You can also do this in a straddle. Alright, mechanics. So for a regular handstand, you only need to focus on pressing forwards and backwards. By removing the lateral support of one hand, the wrist must now move in all directions. So it's not just forwards and backwards, but also side to side. Simultaneously, without the support of one arm, rotation can happen, causing you to turn out of position and out of balance. Your center of mass will also differ between the regular handstand and the one arm. With the one arm, your center of mass will shift onto one side. This is where stacking takes place. I'll explain this next. Now we're going to talk about correct form. So starting with your hands shoulder width apart, grasping the floor as you would for a regular handstand. You have to lean onto one side, allowing the stacking process to begin. The center of hips, shoulders and elbows will all be stacked on top of each other and directly over the wrist. Your opposing arm can be used to help find balance by causing movement in a position to the other side of the body. Over time, you learn how to use only your balancing hand without needing any assistance from the other hand or hips, gaining full control over the movement. I'll now show a slow mode demonstration so you can see what it looks like in action. Now onto progressions. This is where the journey really begins. The first and most important step is practicing your leans, understanding how to shift your weight onto one side, slowly increasing pressure on one side while relieving pressure from the other. Next we'll move on to finger assisted holds. You will start by shifting from a flat hand onto your five fingers. Then you're going to work your way down to four, then three, and so on. All the way until you get to one, where you're going to go onto your thumb first, and then your index finger. And then once you're comfortable, you can start practicing with attempts or short pulses. Now personally, I'm not a big fan of using the wall to learn this. It can work, but it isn't the most effective way. The reason being is, your feet are now in front of the rest of the body, so more weight will be shifting you forward. Also, there's very limited space between your hands and the wall to allow your feet to move while you try to find balance. However, it's definitely a good way to understand body positioning, and it can be really helpful for building endurance on your wrist and shoulder. I want to point out a lot of common mistakes I see people doing when they're starting out. The first is removing your assisting hand way too quickly. Shift your weight. Go on to one finger, and once you feel like you have a balance, remove it slowly. Also, we have a bending of the knees. This makes it harder at the beginning because it changes how your mass is distributed. I'm going to show you a few complementary exercises that you could do to help aid your progress. So you have a side-to-side -side lean, which means you're just gradually shifting your weight onto one side, getting comfortable with the new added pressure. Handstand push-ups are a great way to strengthen your shoulders. If you can't do them freestanding, then you could do these on a the wall. Once again, shoulder taps are great as well, as you're constantly shifting your center of mass over to one side. One underrated exercise is the diamond handstand. These are quite tough, but can be a good bridge towards the one arm. Now I'm going to show you how I warm up daily. This consists of a dynamic stretch routine for the wrists and shoulders mainly. I'll be performing only a few reps for demonstration purposes, but I recommend you do about 10 slow and controlled reps for each exercise shown. With all of these exercises, ensure that you maintain straight arms and locked out elbows. This will allow the stretch to be done correctly. Only move through the motion to a point of discomfort. You never really want to push yourself and feel obvious pain. The purpose of this is to warm up the joints and increase the range of motion. There will be a written version of the warm up and sample workout towards the end so that you can follow. Again, for the shoulder exercises, you want to maintain straight arms. Some key points include the thicker the bands, the tougher the stretch. And the wider your hand stance is, the easier the stretch. So to make it more difficult, you can decrease the distance between your hands gradually over time.
Here's the sample workout. You can either follow this as an example or change the exercises according to your current level. Note it down or take a picture so you can follow it later. I'd like to finish this off with a cool down. Now, it's not necessary, but it can be beneficial to safely slow down your heart rate as well as improve flexibility, which in turn can help prevent injury in future sessions. You'll be performing the same wrist exercises as you did in the warm-up, but this time it will be static instead of dynamic, meaning you'll be holding each stretch for a brief period of time. I recommend you hold each stretch for roughly 20 to 30 seconds and to rest about 10 seconds in between. I hope you found this tutorial of value. Be sure to let me know of any comments or questions you may have or reach out to me on Instagram. I'll be making far more tutorials all the way from the beginner levels to the more advanced, so stay tuned for those coming in the new future. And finally, I want you to understand that this move does take time, so you have to stick with it. Trust the process and enjoy the journey, it's going to be a fun one.